Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Cloud and AI Analytics. Hope everyone is doing good. I am Vignesh and in this video, we are going to construct a big data pipeline using Cloud Data Flow's predefined template where the source is Cloud Storage Bucket and the sync or the target is Cloud Big Table. So in order to explain more, we are going to load the file from Cloud Storage to Cloud Big Table by creating a Cloud Big Table instance and then creating a cloud storage bucket and loading the data file into that particular bucket. And finally, we'll be using the predefined template offered by Cloud Dataflow to construct this pipeline. So without any further delay, let's get started. So the first thing is you have to make sure you have enabled the API of three different services. One is the source, cloud storage, and the next, the sync or the target, cloud big table, and finally, the cloud data flow itself. So now we'll search for Cloud Big Table, and I have already enabled the API of Cloud Big Table. I'll just click on this create instance. So a quick overview on Cloud Big Table. Cloud Big Table is a NoSQL database, and it is a very popular service which is used in Google Cloud Platform, and it is basically a white column in our database. It is mainly used in most of the use cases related to financial or time series. So you'll be making, and it is also used in core services of Google itself, like Google search, YouTube, Google photos, and Google drive. So you can see lot of services using this particular big table. So first click on this create instance and name the instance. So I have give, I have created a documentation and we will be following throughout this lab for this documentation only. So first thing is I'll give my big table instance as personalized sales. So instance name is personalized sales and instance ID, it is auto populated by Google Cloud and it is something, it is permanent. You can't change this instance ID, but you can change this instance name whenever you want it. The next thing is storage. So you can select storage either SSD or SDD. So I'll go with SSD. So I have already created a video explaining you how to create a cloud big table instance and what is big table instance. I'll give you link of that video in this description session. You can take a look at it if you're new to this cloud big table. Next thing is continue. And the third, which is the very important point with the big table instances, configure your first cluster. So the ideal or the base idea of big table instances first to create instance, then we have to configure the cluster and inside the cluster, we will be creating tables and respective schemas like uh, column families, columns, data into it. So here you can see configure your first cluster. So this is also auto populated by Google Cloud itself and you can select a location. Since I'm very close to Mumbai, I'll choose this Asia South one and zone, let it be Asia South one A and choose node scaling mode. So basically there are two types of mode. One is manual allocation and the next one is auto scaling. So if you're going with production particular instance, then you can go with this auto scaling. I'm going with a development instance for this lab. It is more than enough for me. So the next, the encryption option. And under this advanced option, you can see, you can create cluster from different region also. If you want, you can create cluster from different region in order to replicate our data in order to rep for high availability and scalability of this big table instance. So if you want, you can add that, but I'm not going to do it. And here you can see the pricing estimate. $539 per month, that's about 0.75 an hour with zero GB storage. So here I'm going to increase from zero to 10 gigabytes. So this is my configuration. And now I'm going to click on this create cluster or create instance basically. So it will not take much time. Within 10 to 15 seconds, you can see our instance is ready. So here you can see personalized sales and instance name, application profiles, zone, all the details you can find it here. If you want, you can edit the instance. If you want, you can delete the instance as well. And under this table, we are going to create a table for this particular instance. So create table and you can give table ID as user sessions and column family. You are going to create two column families. One is interactions and the other one is sales. So I'll give one column family as interaction and I'm going to configure with same garbage collection as well. And the next column family, I'll add it as sales. So basically I have created one table, the name user session, and I've created two column family, one with interactions and the other one with sales. Now I'm going to click on this create and it will take some time and it will create the table for this particular instance. So table ID is user sessions and the cluster. 
personalized sales C1 and the status is ready. We have not created any backup and we have not created any stream folders and no storage utilization as well. So the table is ready. Now we have to create the cloud storage bucket. You can search for cloud storage bucket and we are going to create the new cloud storage bucket for this demo. So my cloud storage bucket name is store and I'm going to create continue. This is going to be a region and remember Asia South one is what we have created and I'll go with the same thing. Asia South one Mumbai and let all the other details be same. So I'll just click on this create instance and then confirm it. So I have created a big table instance in Asia South one region and I have created a cloud storage bucket in the same region. And the third thing is we are going to data flow. So search for data flow and you will be able to see this data flow streaming analytics service. So data flow, it works on top of Apache Beam, a unified programming model, which supports both batch and streaming processing pipeline. And I have created a lot of videos on cloud data flow on Apache Beam. I'll give the links of those videos in the description section of this particular video. So you can just click on this create job from template. We can give a job name and the region let it be Asia South one. Make sure all those things falls in the same region. So Asia South one, Mumbai. And the data flow template under batch processing sequence, you have to select this. Just click on this and all the necessary things on all the required parameters and necessary things will be auto populated as usual. So what is the project ID? What is the instance ID of the cloud big table? What is the table ID? and where our cloud storage bucket is like where our data is present inside the cloud storage bucket and what is the temporary location. So open this in a new tab and make sure you go to cloud storage bucket and the latest bucket which we created for this demo is storage to big table and I'm going to create a folder called temp. So I'll copy the directory of this and I'll paste it here. This is where the logs, the temporary logs, all those things will be stored here and cloud storage bucket like project ID. This is my project ID. I'll copy this and paste inside this project ID and search for big table and get the big table instance, which is which we have created. Let's just like get that instance ID, basically not the instance name, but the instance ID. Copy this, paste it here and then the table ID. Go into this table and you'll be able to find the table ID. So user session is my table name and that is my table ID as well. I'll copy this, I'll paste it here and the source pattern, path pattern. So I have given this here. So GS, this is my source path pattern. So if you don't know what it is, you can just go into this. You use this GS util cat and paste it. Uh, basically, this is sequence file. You'll be not able to see it very clearly, but once loading, once after loading this into cloud big table, you'll be able to see what all this is. It is basically, it is encrypted now. So we'll place it here inside this cloud storage pattern. We'll just place it here and I'll just remove those things. Yep. So now we are good. Google manage encryption key. And if you want to enable data flow prime, you can enable it. If you want to know what is data flow prime, you can just take a look at those videos. And rest all the other other things like optional parameters, all those things we'll keep it default for now. But if you want, you can change the machine type to some other things and you can play with all these values. So for now, I'll be keeping it as default and then I'll run this job. So once the job is in running state, you will be able to see a similar screen in your uh, in your uh, system as well. So here you can find the job graph details, execution details, job metrics. So as of now, I'm not able to find it. So, so here you can see it is still in the starting stage. It's a batch processing and the job name, job ID, SDK version, this everything it is selected by Google Cloud itself. Job region, worker location, current workers. It is still in the starting state. So you are not able to see all the other details. Once it is in the running state, now then you will be able to see all these details here so we'll wait i'll pass it once it is in the running state i'll resume back so here you can see i have got an error for help troubleshooting like zone resource pool exhausted it means whatever the region i selected there is no zones or there is no resources available in for this particular project so what i'll do is i'll i'll do the similar setup in us east 4 region or in us central 1 region 
So if you see, I have created an instance in US central one, whatever we have created before the same thing I have replicated in big table instance. And here you can see storage to big table and this it is in US multi region in United States. I'll create one folder and I'll place it as temp. So we have created in US central one region. Now the same thing I'll open inside this cloud data flow job. So under job, I'll create job from template and I'll give a name. This is my job name and the region let it be US central one and the data flow template under batch processing you will be able to find it. So it is so here if you see I have configured all the required parameters and the same now I'm going to click on this run job. So here you can see read sequence file create mutations right to big table. So all those things are auto populated by cloud data flow by GCP itself. We have to just use this predefined template configure the values rest all the other things will be taken care by Google Cloud. So here you can see the job name, job ID, job type. It is currently in the running state, Apache Beam, job region, rest all the other details. You can see it here and execution details and job metrics. You will be able to see all these details and what is the job metrics, how many workers nodes are used, all those things you will be able to find it here on the cost of this particular job. You can find it here and if there is any recommendations, you can see it here as well. So here you can see job graph. If you want, you can clone it. So you can just clone what with the same parameter, but with a different name, stop it, import it as a pipeline. Or if you want, you can share this date job also. And if you want to trigger from cloud functions or cloud run, you can automate or you can configure that as well. So after two, three minutes, six seconds, our job is completed. It is in the success stage. So you can see all the details, job name, and what is the resource metrics, one virtual CPU, current memory all the details you can find it here for this particular job in order to execute it this other resource which data flow as used so now we'll go into cloud shell and cross check whether the result is done or not so i'll just clear this console and before getting into this one important step which i wanted to tell you is like we have to configure this cloud big table instance cbtrc file so now you have to search for dot cbtrc file so here you can see the dot cbtrc so you can use this nano dot cbtrc file and can hit enter so here you can see the project id instance you have to rename all this values here so, so this is my project name and the instance id i'll just save it here so once after saving it you have to make sure you give this command cbt so cbt is nothing but it is a command line tool specifically created for cloud big table so we are using cbt read the table name and the count 10 now hit enter and you will be able to see the error so what is the error invalid argument description when passing project after adding this as so i got the same error so what i'm going to do is i'm going to check this cbtrc file so make sure the instance name should not be there it should be instance id so i'll go this I'll go here and copy this instance ID. I'll paste it here. Yes, finally it worked. Make sure inside that CBTRC file, it should be project ID and it should be instance ID, not project name or instance name. If there is instance name or project name, it will give you an error. So here you can see finally I'm able to load the data inside cloud big table. So this is what the sequence text file, which is present inside cloud storage. After loading into cloud big table, you can see blue interaction and blue blouse. So interaction is what the column family and blue blouse is the value which is which is present inside this and the same way sales. Sales is the column family which we have created and sale is the data and respective value. So this is how you will be able to see uh, the records inside cloud big table. And basically, whatever the record which is stored inside Cloud Big Table, it will be displayed in the name of row key, column family, respective value, and the timestamp. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned how to load data from Cloud Storage to Cloud Big Table using predefined workflow template. If you have any questions or any doubt, post that in the comment section. I'll take a look at it and reply to it as soon as possible. Please do like, comment, share, and subscribe to cloud and AI analytics. I'll see you in the next video with more interesting content. Until then, it's bye from Viknesh. Happy learning.